Welcome to this presentation on infectious diseases of barramundi and health management. My name is Kate Hudson and I'm a senior lecturer at James Cook University in Queensland, Australia. I also lead the Marine Parasitology Laboratory in the Centre for Sustainable Tropical Fisheries and Aquaculture at JCU. This is the first of a series of two presentations. The first presentation will give you an introduction into barramundi aquaculture, also known as Asian sea bass, Lartes calcarifer, and then outline uh, prevalent viral and bacterial diseases, as well as some fungal diseases. In the second presentation, I'll focus on protozoan and metazoan parasites and give you a summary of health management practice in the industry. So despite reliable hatchery production and commercial expansion of the barramundi aquaculture industry, there are a number of viral, bacterial, fungal and parasitic diseases that threaten sustained production. So consequently, the focus and content of this talk is on major viral, bacterial, fungal and parasitic diseases which have occurred in or which may adversely impact on uh, farm production. So barramundi are cultured in a variety of aquaculture systems, in open, semi-closed and closed systems. They can also be cultured in freshwater, brackish and marine environments. But each of these environments presents its own unique disease challenges. Fortunately, losses caused by pathogens and parasites can be prevented by adopting appropriate biosecurity protocols. Common biosecurity measures used on farm may include routine health inspections, quarantine and treatment of wild caught broodstock, egg disinfection, strict equipment sanitation, human traffic control, intake water treatment, effluent treatment, ensuring that you're delivering clean feeds to the animals, uh, restricting potential movement of stock, appropriate disposal of mortalities and limiting interactions between wild and farmed organisms, particularly in open and semi-closed systems. But difficulties can arise once a disease has established and spread within a facility, and that's because eradication is usually impossible. So following a disease outbreak, uh, vaccination and chemoprophylaxis may need to be implemented to reduce outbreaks and minimise losses. So in this presentation, I will present a brief description of important viral, bacterial and fungal diseases, together with a diagnosis um, and possible treatment and or control mechanisms that may be applied in aquaculture. So please keep in mind that information on management and treatment is really provided as a guide only and any concerned parties or industry should really consult with their government authorities to ascertain re regulations associated with the use of chemotherapeutics. Also, uh, non-infectious disease and abnormalities due to environmental contaminants or nutritional deficiencies are certainly equally, equally important problems in barramundi aquaculture, but they are beyond the scope of these two presentations which focus on infectious disease issues. Uh, furthermore, continued intensive production of barramundi is likely to result in further occurrences of previously unknown or undescribed diseases, which won't be described here. So first I'll be addressing viral disease. So barramundi or Asian sea bass culture is inflicted by several important classes of viruses, including those from the viral families Nodoviridae and Iridoviridae. A virus is a small infectious agent that replicates only inside the living cells of an organism. And viruses, virus particles consist of two or three parts, the genetic material made either from DNA or RNA, long molecules that carry genetic information, a protein coat that protects these genes, and in some cases an envelope of lipids that surrounds the protein coat when they are outside a cell. So the average virus is about one hundredth the size of the average bacterium. So most viruses are too small to be seen directly with an optical microscope. 
Viruses spread through vectors such as blood sucking parasites, also via the faecal oral route, physical contact and or entering the body in food or water. So viral infections in animals provoke an immune response that usually eliminates the infecting virus, but immune responses can also be produced by vaccines, which confer an artificially acquired immunity to the specific viral infection. So notoviruses, which are in the genus Betanovirus, uh, microscopic single-stranded RNA viruses which cause a disease known as viral nervous necrosis, VNN, or viral encephalopathy and retinopathy, which is VER. Notoviruses infect the central nervous system of fish, including the brain, eyes and spinal cord, resulting in cellular vacuolation and degeneration. So infected fish are generally pale, or alternatively, they show quite dark coloration with redness around the head. The barramundi are very susceptible to VNN and the disease has been reported to occur in most regions where it's cultured, including Australia, China, India, Indonesia, Israel, Malaysia, the Philippines, Singapore, Tahiti, Taiwan and Thailand. You can see a review on VNN by Monday et al published in 2002. Most fish are affected as larvae or juveniles and outbreaks tend to be associated with high intensity culture where infections can result in up to 100% mortality. So VNN could really be considered one of the most significant viral diseases affecting hatchery and nursery production. Both vertical and horizontal transmission have been implicated in VNN outbreaks. Vertical transmission implies that the virus is shed in the reproductive fluids of male and female broodstock and is present in or on the fertilised eggs, while horizontal transmission can occur through the water supply, cohabitation with infected individuals or feeding contaminated fish to cultured stock. So, uh, the cannibalistic nature of juvenile uh, barramundi may also facilitate horizontal transmission. So behaviour associated with infection can include anorexia, pale grey pigmentation of the body, whirling, swimming and loss of equilibrium. Identification of VNN infection is fundamental to hatchery management. So viral nervous necrosis can be diagnosed by demonstrating characteristic lesions in the brain and or the retina by light microscopy detection of virions, viral antigens or viral nucleotides by electron microscopy, serology or molecular techniques. These can include immunofluorescence antibody tests such as IFAT, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assays, ELISA, and polymerase chain reaction, PCR, or detection of specific antibodies in sera or body fluids and tissue culture of the virus. However, subclinical infection may be challenging to identify because the quantity of the virus and the prevalence of infection can be low. So scientists are attempting to improve the sensitivity of diagnostic tests in order to reduce the number of false negative results and enable more accurate population level tests. There is no current known treatment for VNN so approaches to control are largely based on preventing vertical transmission, which can be achieved by excluding infected, infected broodstock and by disinfecting fertilised eggs by washing them with ozone in seawater. Horizontal transmission can be reduced by maintaining good water quality and low stocking densities. Lymphocystis is caused by viruses in the family Iridoviridae and occurs in marine and freshwater fish worldwide. Infection has been reported in Barramundi in Australia, Thailand and Singapore. A morbidity of 70% and mortality of approximately 1% were reported for sea cage Barramundi with lymphocystis disease in Thailand, uh, while 100% mortality has resulted from the disease in fry cultured in Singapore. 
The disease is characterised by the development of single or multiple nodular lesions on the fins, but it can also occur on the skin and internal organs. The lesions may resemble small clutches of cauliflower, and as a consequence, the disease is sometimes called cauliflower disease, and you can see that in the image provided here. The virus can be transferred horizontally. Lymphocystis reduces the marketability of affected fish, as can be shown in the image, and can cause serious economic loss in the aquaculture industry. Eventually, the lesions inhibit physiological processes and secondary bacterial infections kill the fish. There is no vaccine or known treatment for this virus. So fish ex exhibiting symptoms of the virus should be contained and humanely euthanized to prevent virus spread. Restocking of disease-free certified fish should follow a period of following. So I'll now talk to you about some major bacterial diseases. Bacteria co constitute a large domain of prokaryotic micro microorganisms. They're typically a few micrometres in length and bacteria have a wide range of shapes ranging from spheres to rods and spirals. The vast majority of bacteria are rendered harmless by the protective effects of the immune system and a few are beneficial. However, a few species of bacteria are pathogenic and cause infectious diseases. Antibiotics are used to treat bacterial infections in aquaculture and antibiotic resistance is becoming common. Streptococcus is a severe infection caused by the gram-positive bacterium Streptococcus ineae. The disease may occur in freshwater and marine environments and result in high mortalities. There are two clinical forms of this disease, uh, subacute and acute. The subacute form displays signs typical of streptococcal infections, including protrusion of the eyeball, exophthalmia, dark coloration and erratic swimming. This form of the disease is responsible for about 1% of losses observed. There are limited clinical signs observed in fish dying of the acute form of the disease, with the only indication being mild corneal opacity in some cases. This form is more devastating, with heavy losses occurring primarily overnight. The culture of barramundi in marine cages has suffered severe losses due to streptococcus in Australia of between 8 and 15% of production per year. But in severe outbreaks, it can result in losses of up to 70% of production. Farmers might be alerted to, an appen to a pending outbreak from mortalities uh, in wild fish found cohabiting around or even in uh, barramundi cages in the days before an outbreak. In a paper by Bromage, they proposed that wild fish cohabiting, cohabiting sea caged fish might serve as an important reservoir of streptococcus. So subsequently, management practices such as excluding wild fish from inside sea cages by using more effective barrier netting and diligent removal of moribund fish reduction in stocking densities might help control the disease. In closed recirculating culture systems, depopulation, disinfection and restocking with disease-free fish are the best means for elimination. Vaccination has been met with limited success as it only provides up to six months immunity. However, infected fish may respond to the administration of oral or injectable antibiotics. So vaccine failure appears to result in part from multiple genotypes being found within and between different farms. Uh, and streptococcus is also known to be a human zoonotic agent. So it is pays to take care when handling fish. Uh, and certainly individuals who have handled infected fish have developed cellulitis of the hands and endocarditis. Vibrio. Members of the genus Vibrio and other related genera are the causative agent of vibriosis, which is a deadly hemorrhagic septicemia disease. In the Philippines, net cage culture of barramundi has been affected with 2-3% daily mortality associated with Vibrio infections following heavy rainfall. Vibrio affects a diverse range of marine, estuarine and freshwater fish species 
and is frequently secondary to poor water quality, stress, poor nutrition and parasite infection. Infection is characterised by extensive cutaneous and system systemic hemorrhages and localised cutaneous ulceration may occur. Clinical signs include abnormal swimming behaviour, opaque eyes, exophthalmia and reddening of the abdomen. Internally, necrosis and hemorrhage in the kidney, liver and spleen may be observed. Because of its high morbidity and mortality rates, substantial research has been undertaken to elucidate the virulence mechanisms of this pathogen and to try and develop rapid detection techniques and effective disease prevention strategies. So Vibrio may be treated by administration of antibiotics, including oxytetracycline, which can be prescribed by a veterinarian. Epitheliocystis, or gill chlamydia, is a bacterial disease thought to be caused by chlamydia or rickettsia-like microorganisms. They are obligate intracellular bacteria, and they're not known to function well outside of host cells. So the reservoir and mode of transmission amongst fish remains unknown, but horizontal transmission occurs within some host species. Research has speculated that epitheliocystis may exist as a chronic, dormant, yet opportunistic condition within Asian sea bass populations. Preliminary diagnosis of epitheliocystis is made by observation of white to yellow cysts on the gills or skin of affected fish. Thick capsule and granular contents are characteristic of cysts and can be seen in wet mounts, but histology and electron microscopy is recommended for definitive diagnosis. The occurrence, prevalence and associated mortalities for this disease have not been reported for Asian sea bass uh, and there is no treatment once fish are infected. And on to the umocytes. Umocytes form a distinct phylogenetic lineage of fungus-like eukaryotic microorganisms. They are filamentous, microscopic, absorptive organisms that reproduce both sexually and asexually. They are often uh, referred to as water moulds. Epizootic ulcerative syndrome, or EUS, is caused by Aphanomyces invadens, which has motile spores that invade the skin of fish. The disease occurs in freshwater and estuarine conditions and is generally not observed in marine environments. Infection begins as a small area of reddening over a single scale, which subsequently spreads to involve a number of adjacent scales resulting in severe ulcers and is commonly known as red spot disease. Barramundi or Asian sea bass can develop cloudiness of the cornea, which may or may not be accompanied by lesions in the skin. Some cases of EUS heal spontaneously, but infection can result in high losses of juvenile barramundi. EUS may cause unsightly injuries in fish, as can be seen in this picture. Please note that this is illustrative only. It is not an example from barramundi. Captive fish um, may respond to treatment uh, with an antiseptic. Uh, or increasing the salinity of holding waters. So infected fish should not be translocated to prevent further spread of the disease. So this presentation has given you a summary of the viral, bacterial and fungal diseases known from Asian sea bass or barramundi aquaculture. And for further information on this presentation, please contact me uh, by email and also please note that photo credits are for image copyright and that some photos are representative only.